Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our 9 a.m. service. So glad that you could all join us as we are back in our series entitled The Gospel Explained. So for today's passage, I would like for us to read Romans chapter 3, and we're going to read verses 21 all the way to verse 26. I would like to invite everyone to read this out loud with me, verse 21 all the way to verse 26 of Romans chapter 3. It says here, but now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law, although the law and the prophets bear witness to it. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by His grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation by His blood to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness, because in His divine forbearance, He had passed over former sins. It was to show His righteousness at the present time, so that He might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank You for this privilege, God, that we could worship You. A privilege, God, to know You. And we ask that You would pour out Your Holy Spirit afresh, that we may know You better that we may understand your righteousness and how we can receive the righteousness of God by grace through faith. Lord, bless our time, bless the preaching of the word. This I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. If you just joined us, um, this is actually a return of our series entitled The Gospel Explained. For this year, we are tackling the book of Romans, actually, all throughout the year. So, we are now on our fifth part, and um, of course, uh, you may go back to the previous messages and uh, look at this, uh, the previous links and some playlists natin, whether on YouTube or on Facebook, uh, Victory Malate page. And uh, one of the things that we are looking at the book of Romans, why we are taking the time to study the book of Romans is because this is Paul, the Apostle Paul, who wrote a big part of the New Testament. This is his uh, magnum opus. This is his... Uh, uh, obra maestra, okay, and many people have looked at the book of Romans and their lives have been radically changed by it. According to a New Testament scholar, F.F. F. Bruce, this is what he said, that time and time again, in the course of Christian history, it has liberated the minds of men, brought them back to an understanding of the essential gospel of Christ, and started spiritual revolutions. Kaya nga yung title natin, The Gospel Explained, because this book the book of Romans, or the letter of Paul to the church in Rome, explained the gospel very, very well. In fact, somebody said, kahit mawala na nga daw yung the rest of the Bible, if you just keep the, the book of Romans, Christianity would survive. And uh, of course, hindi lang ito life-changing for uh, great church heroes in history like, like Augustine or Luther or Calvin and Wesley. Uh, F.F. Bruce continued saying also that what happened to Augustine, Luther, and Wesley launched great spiritual movements which have left their mark in world history. But similar things have happened much more frequently to very ordinary men and women as the words of this letter came home to them with power. So it is our prayer, it is our hope that as we go through this series on the book of Romans, so we have a greater appreciation and a greater understanding of the gospel. The good news. Why is it good? And why is it such a great news that even though it happened thousands of years ago, it is still very much relevant for us today? So just a quick recap. We, have, we are on our fifth part. But we, on part one, we talked about the power of God. And we also looked at the severity of God or the wrath of God and how God is severe in, in uh, saving mankind okay, through the gospel. And then we also looked at the kindness of God that that leads us to repentance. And then we look at the covenant of God, which comes by the Spirit in our hearts, not by the letter. So for today, we're going to talk about the righteousness of God. You know, in uh, Romans chapter 1, just a quick recap, it says here in verse 16 and 17, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to 
everyone who believes. To the Jew first, and also to the Greek. In verse 17, you may read out loud with me. For in it, in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith for faith. As it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. So I want to start it off by also giving us a recap that the gospel actually reveals the righteousness of God. It is the power of God unto salvation, and along with that is a revelation of the righteousness of God. Of course, pag iniisip natin yung righteousness, uh, uh, alam natin yung ibig sabihin nun. Eh? Righteousness is uh, being morally upright, judicially approved, or there's nothing legally or morally wrong. And when we think of the righteousness of God, He is that. And, um, you know, I like how Wayne Grudem, the one who wrote uh, Systematic Theology, uh, theology uh, theologian said this, that God's righteousness means that God always acts in accordance with what is right and is himself the final standard of what is right. You know, if you really uh, look at the English definition, pag sinabing righteousness, the quality of being morally right or justifiable. Pag sinabing justice is actually just behavior or the treatment or the quality of being fair and reasonable. Kaya nga meron tayong picture of Lady Justice, which is just a personification na yung woman that's blinded, meaning impartial. Meron balancing scales, which is a, a symbol of fairness. And then there's a sword, which also means judgment whenever sin is committed or there's guilt incurred. But if you go to Scripture, in the English terms, righteousness and justice may seem very, very different. But if you look at the Old Testament in the original Hebrew, and of course in the New Testament in the original Greek, you will find that righteousness and justice are very much connected. Righteousness and justice, which the psalmist also says is the foundation of God's throne. So connected yung righteousness and justice ni God. Ibig sabihin, He is morally right. He will always do what is right. He, is, uh, na, na, he will not do anything that is contrary to His nature. To his character, he will not do anything wrong. He is that standard of righteousness. And not only that, because he is that standard, he also has the right and the power to bring justice. To bring evil deeds to judgment. That's why when Paul was trying to explain this, I know we discussed this at length also when we looked at the wrath of God and the severity of God on part 2. But let me read this in verse 1 to 6. It says here, Then what advantage is the Jew? Or what is the value of circumcision? Much in every way. To begin with, the Jews were entrusted with the oracles of God. What is somewhere unfaithful? Does their faithlessness nullify the faithfulness of God? Because when Paul was writing to the church in Rome, uh, bumalik na yung mga Jewish uh, people who were in exile. And when they came back to the church in Rome, it's predominantly Gentiles, predominantly non-Jewish. And uh, the minority, the Jewish, parang may racism then during that time, the Jewish people were telling the, the Greeks and the, the Gentiles that they too have to be circumcised. They have to follow uh, customs and Jewish customs as well to, uh, to, to be approved of God. And Paul was trying to explain the beauty of the gospel that Jews and Greeks were actually created equal and saved in an equal manner. Of course, hindi ibig sabihin na, na kasi faithless tayo doesn't mean that God will stop being faithful. Of course, Pastor Andrew shared about that a while ago. So the, our faithlessness does not nullify the faithfulness of God. Sabi nga niya, by no means. That God be true, though everyone were a liar, as it is written, that you may be justified in your words and prevail when you were judged. He was talking about how God is going to be uh, justified in His words. His words are always true. His words will always be proven right because He is righteous. And He will prevail when He is judged. Kasi sometimes yung mga, yung mga tao, not just during the time of Rome, but also us today, parang tayo pa yung nagjudge kay God. God, parang ano ka, parang unfaithful ka, kahit tayo yung faithless. God always remains faithful. And sometimes we think that, Lord, you're not being right because you allowed certain things to happen. But the Bible is very clear that God is justified in His words. And He's always prevailed uh, whenever He is judged. In verse 5, But if our unrighteousness serves to show the righteousness of God, what shall we say? That God is unrighteous to inflict wrath on us? I speak in a human way, by no means. For then, how could God judge the world? 
So in other words, uh, it's not us who's judging God, but God who is righteous, God who has justice, and because God is a righteous judge, He must punish sin. Di ba, alam naman natin kapag ka yung isang human judge, an earthly judge, is someone who will um, punish someone who is innocent, punish someone who is not guilty. Di ba, sinasabi natin, wow, that's unfair. That's not right. That's, that's un- unjust. Injustice yun. But it's also true in reverse. If we will tolerate evil, if we will just allow bad things to happen and bad people to continue hurting those who are innocent, then it is also injustice. It is also unrighteous. It is wicked. It is evil. And we are all clamoring for justice, that justice must be served. And when we look at God, a God who is really righteous, a God who has justice and righteousness as the foundation of His throne, He, in His nature, must punish sin. Now, some of us might think right away, oh, ano, kaya medyo parang bad news. How can that be good news? So, Paul continued to explain this all the more. And, and, and uh, while it may appear like a bad news, this will really end up good news. And we would all appreciate it when we understand the fullness of the righteousness of God. In verse 9 to 20, ito na explain niya how feeling natin, like the Jewish people, sometimes they feel like they were better. And yes, may value naman doon. The oracles of God came through, uh, through them. But when you look at Jews, Gentiles, were pretty much the same. I think explanation ni Paul in verse 9 to 20. What then? Are we Jews any better off? No, not at all. For we have already charged that all, both Jews and Greeks, are under sin. As it is written, none is righteous. Everybody say none. None is righteous. No, not one. No one understands. No one seeks for God. Minsan, inisip ko nga, well, pa talaga natin si God. But actually, in our efforts of trying to look for God, it's not really bringing us closer to God. Our human efforts are actually bringing us farther away from Him. The Bible says, none is righteous. No, not one. No one understands. No one seeks for God. And in verse 12, all have turned aside. Together, they have become worthless. No one does good, not even one. Now, I know we all want to feel good about ourselves and think that there's, there's still good in each and every one of us. And I think if you really look at it theologically, meron naman. Because God created us in His image and likeness. And God has created us uh, for His good pleasing and perfect will. And, and see, we see the goodness of God's creation in us sometimes taking effect when we do good things. But when we look at also um, honestly and sincerely, and seriously, meron nga nagsabi, kinumbine, sin seriously. When we look at ourselves more deeply, we also realize that there's so much evil in our hearts. That we have this capacity to become a factory of idols. We make false gods. And kung si Adam and Eve nga, who did not knew sin, uh, rebelled against God, even if they saw God face to face, even if they were walking with God in the cool of the day, in a perfect environment, sila nga, nagdisobey kay God, how much more us today, who were born with a sinful nature, with our design and makeup already flawed, because of the sin of those who went ahead of us, generations after generations. So, hindi lang yung sinful condition natin. In fact, it also comes out in our sinful speech. Sabi dito, their throat is an open grave. They use their tongues to deceive. The venom of asp is under their lips. Their mouth is full of curses and bitterness. Hindi lang yung sinful speech, pati yung sinful action. Their feet are swift to shed blood. In their paths are ruin and misery. In the way of peace, they have not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Doesn't that describe many of us, many of the people we know? Sinful condition, sinful speech, sinful actions, sinful lives. And we don't just keep it to ourselves. Many times we flaunt and tell the world about it. And when I look at even my own life, you know, how come it's so easy to just do what is wrong? 
And it's so hard to do what is right. Hindi lang yun. Minsan, when we do what is right, it makes us feel proud. It makes us self-righteous. It makes us look down on others who are not doing the things that we are doing. And when I think about that, we are such in a pitiful condition and we realize that we really need someone to save us. We cannot be our own savior. We need someone to bring salvation in our midst. Verse 19, now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law so that every mouth may be stopped and the whole world may be held accountable to God. That's the reality. God is a righteous judge. He must punish sin. And one day, every one of us, the world will be held accountable to God. But look at this, verse 20. For by works of the law, no human being... Look at the person next to you, if there's someone there. <laughs> Let's look at ourselves in the mirror. Diba? Kung human being ka, sabi ng Bible... Okay? No human being will be justified in His sight. None of us will be made right before God. None of us will pass God's standards of righteousness, God's standard of perfection. Since through the law comes knowledge of sin. So the law reveals to us that man cannot be justified by works. That's what the law reveals. Hindi naman sinasabi ng law na kung sino talaga yung magaling sa pagkaka-obey ng law. Actually, ang pinapoint ng law is lahat, lahat tayo, pantay-pantay, we break the law. And when we think of God being the righteous judge and we must punish sin, yes, it sounds bad news. Though it's the truth, it is scary that those of us who are in sin, those of us who have lived sinful lives, those of us who will not... Uh, turn from our wicked ways and turn to God and find the righteousness of God, there is indeed uh, judgment waiting for us. The law just brings the knowledge of sin. But the knowledge of sin reveals to us our need of a Savior. And that's why the gospel is such a powerful message because it reveals to us the righteousness of God, His righteous standards, His justice, but it also reveals to us the power of God unto salvation. And that comes, the righteousness of God comes from Him, not from us. It's not the righteousness of Richie, it's not the righteousness of, of victory, it's not the righteousness of any one of us. It's the righteousness of God. And I know we live in a world that's so uh, very much into religion and and then Paul understands that. Paul grew up very religious, being a Jew and a Pharisee himself. But when he came to realize the power of the gospel, it changed the way he, he thought of who God is when, and how God wants to relate with us. And of course, growing up in a religious country like the Philippines, I grew up in a very religious family. I realized how the law, as much as it, it is important, as much as it is a blessing to us in that it points us in what needs to be done and what we should not do, I realized that Christianity is very, very different from, from law-keeping, from earning salvation by works. If I may picture this, it's like a hamster on a wheel. Uh, being uh, religious, trying to earn the righteousness of God, the pleasure of God through good works, is just like a hamster running on a wheel. It's too much activity, very, very tired, but not accomplishing anything. It doesn't even bring you a step closer to God. In fact, our self-righteousness is repulsive before God. Because we could not approach God with pride in our hearts, thinking that we have earned the right to be in His presence, knowing our sinful nature. Hindi nga natin kayang pagbayaran lahat ng mga kasalanan natin hindi pa natin ma-assure yung sarili natin by our own strength, by our own effort, na hindi na tayo magkakamali from this day forward. Of course, the world tries to do that with many, many ways, whether it's uh, uh, trying to follow the eightfold path or the five pillars, or uh, if you can have as many chances and live again and again and again and again, and hopefully by that time, mama master mo na yon and you will reach that part where you will be made perfect, you will be made righteous before God. And of course, as Christians, sometimes we can have a tendency to do that. 
that we see the gospel not as good news, not about how good God is, not about what He has done, but we think it's about God's good advice, what we have to do and what we are not doing and that we should do and, and we try to do it. And in the picture here is like a, a man being given a carrot in front of him, your righteousness. You have to run after that, keep trying, but you're also mindful that every time you fail, there's a consequence, there's a punishment that, that follows uh, right behind you. Tayo as Christians in victory sometimes can fall into that trap, thinking, ah, as long as I, I'm keeping the Ten Commandments, as long as I'm, I'm doing my devotional certain hours a day, as, as long as I'm praying and attending all the prayer meetings and the, and the worship services, kahit panoorin ko pa yung online service multiple times, and maybe attending all the victory groups and joining all the ministries. Now, please don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that Going to church is, is not okay. Having devotional is not okay. Praying is not okay. Giving our tithes and offering is not okay. I'm not saying that's all wrong. But what I'm saying is, what the gospel is saying is that when we're trying to earn our righteousness through those deeds, it doesn't really work. The law reveals to us that we cannot be justified by our works. And now, Here's the good news in verse 21, the one we read a while ago. It says there, but now. Everybody say out loud, but now. So kung ganun yung understanding ni, ni Paul, growing up Jewish and, and uh, being proud to be of the Hebrew of Hebrews, ito yung na-realize niya that has changed his life forever. But now, the righteousness of God, it's God's righteousness, it's not our righteousness. This righteousness of God has been manifested. And this manifestation was apart from the law. Hindi pala yun through law keeping. And uh, of course, the law is important. And the law and the prophets bear witness to this kind of righteousness. The righteousness of God. The righteousness of God through faith. And if you have your Bibles, it's good to encircle that phrase through faith. In Jesus Christ for all who believe. So it is a righteousness of God, not of men. It is a righteousness that is apart from the law. Though the law and the prophets point to it. Kaya pala good News and there's a New Testament because the Old Testament, the Law and the Prophets is pointing to this time that Paul is saying now, but now, when the coming of Christ took place, that now the righteousness of God is through faith, not works, in Christ, not in anyone else, and it's by believing, not by doing. Paul even explained this. There is no distinction. So, kala natin, we feel better than others, that our race is better than others, like the Jew is thinking about that. Actually, sabi, there's no distinction. And here, we are all equal. In what way? For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So, kung yung self-righteousness pala natin, para tayong nagpapayabangan, trying to earn the righteousness of God, is the righteousness, if the righteousness of God is 100%, Para, para tayong nagpapayabangan sa kabaitan natin by saying, uh, at least ako, one point. At least ako, two out of one hundred. Pero the point is, lahat pa rin tayo bagsak. It doesn't matter how you feel good about how good you are. The reality is, we're guilty of so many sins. And though it deserves judgment, it deserves punishment, praise God that the righteousness of God moved him to do what is right and what is right, not just to punish sin, but also to make a way so that sinners can be saved. That's how good God is. Yes, He is righteous. Yes, He is just. But He made a way so that we can be justified. How? Paul says this, are justified by His grace as a gift. It is a gift of God. It's something that we cannot buy. It is something that we cannot earn. But it's something that is offered freely. Not because it's cheap, but because it's so expensive, none of us can pay it back. Jesus purchased the price. And how? Through the redemption. Binayad niya, binay out niya tayo for those of us who would be in faith in Him. Binay out niya yung sins natin, whom God put forward as a propitiation by His blood. So yung word na propitiation dito, it's like a picture of how every year during atonement, during uh, the day of atonement, the high priest will spill the blood sa mercy seat, dun sa Ark of the Covenant, so that the penalty for for Israel's sins can be waived. 
Because God's forgiveness is released, kaya siya tinawag na mercy seat. Then instead of judgment, instead of justice, God's mercy will be released. And now through Christ, because of His redemption, now we have this mercy available to us. Kaya yung sinasabi kanina na, na kinote ni Pastor Andrew sa Lamentations, His mercies are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. His faithfulness is possible. His, His mercies are available for us because of the blood that He spilled. And this is something that we can receive by faith, not by works. Paul even continued by saying that this was to show God's righteousness. Pinakita pa niya yung righteousness ni Lord in what way? Because in His divine forbearance, you just say that with me, divine forbearance. So si God, yes, He is, he is righteous, He is just, He must punish sin, pero thank God, He is also patient. Who among you are glad that hindi tayo judge the Lord right away every time we sin? Who among you are glad that God is uh, long-suffering? He is willing to suffer long, wanting for people to repent, wanting for people to come to Him, wanting for people to turn from their wicked ways that we may receive mercy instead of judgment. And look at this. He had passed over former sins because he was looking forward to this time. It was to show his righteousness at the present time so that he might be just. He is the standard to show to us his standard. He is the only one who modeled it to us what it is to live a life without sin. He is the only one who is perfectly, morally, judicially approved by God. A true son of God. The, tri- the true righteous one the true anointed one, the Christ, the Savior. Eh, pero hindi lang siya yung just, siya rin yung justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus Christ. That's why now through Christ, we have a man who met the standard, but he gave his life as a sacrifice so that through his finished work on the cross, we can be made right before God. The righteousness of God is manifested in Christ and is received through faith. So that's why if, if there's anyone here listening and you feel like you've been trying to, to live right before God, and you ba sa atin, alam ko, ganun yung iniisip natin minsan, ah, alam ko, importante si God, I, I know I have to take my relationship with God seriously, pero iniisip natin, ayusin ko muna yung buhay ko para siguro pag lumapit na ako kay God, mas tatanggapin niya pa ako. Well, the truth of the matter is we can never fix ourselves. We cannot. But thank God that He came in the person of Jesus Christ to show us the way, to reveal to us the truth that yes, He is righteous, yes, He is just, but He is also our justifier so that we can be made right before Him. It's not about how good we are, it's about how good He is. It's never really about what we've done, it's about what He did for us. And we just have to put our trust and faith in Him. That's why I like this picture of how we have righteousness by grace through faith. Kung ang dumi-dumi ng suot natin, that's the old self that we have for those of us who are in Christ. We have to put it off and we are to put on the new self, which is the righteousness of God in us. And si Jesus, kung siya yung the righteous one, yung perfect righteousness niya, He's inviting us to come to Him by faith and lay down our filthy rugs before Him, even our self-righteousness before Him, and that He would cover us with His righteousness. And now we can boldly enter His throne of grace. Not because of how good we are, but because of how good He is. Not because we have earned the right to be there, but because when we receive Jesus in our hearts, in our lives, he gives us the right to become a child of God. That, in a sense, and many more, is what the gospel is really all about. And I want to invite us to pray. If you're here today and maybe you feel like you're still that person running in a wheel and trying to run after the righteousness of God, the pleasure of God, and you've been hurting yourself all along the way because we always fail, and you're tired of living that way, say, it's time to surrender to God. I would like to invite you to pray with me. And it doesn't matter whether you're doing this for the first time, or maybe you've been uh, a Christian for quite a while, but you have reverted back to works. 
It's time for us to repent, turn from our wicked ways, and turn to Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life. And that opens the way for us to go to the Father. Let us pray. Lord, we just thank you, God, for who you are and what you've done. We acknowledge, God, our sin. We acknowledge, God, our wicked ways before you. We acknowledge, God, that we cannot save ourselves and that we are in need of a Savior. So, Father, today, we turn from our wicked ways. We repent of it, Lord, and we turn to you. We ask for your forgiveness. We ask for your mercy. Remove our guilt and cover our shame with your righteousness. Thank you, God, that you will accept us in spite of our worst. But you also love us so much, Lord, that you will not leave us the same way again. May you fill us with your Holy Spirit. Sanctify us, transform us to become a people conforming to your image more and more. We thank you, God, for each and every person here in this room. Help us to understand and appreciate the righteousness of God that is in us by grace through faith. In Jesus' name, amen.